Newton's first law of motion. In our experience, objects must be pushed in order to keep moving, so a force would be needed to have a constant velocity. This is what Aristotle claimed in his series of books entitled Physics, written 2400 years ago. But 400 years ago, another scientist and astronomer, Galileo, proposed the following thought experiment, which revealed another perspective. Imagine two perfectly smooth ramps connected together by a perfectly smooth surface. If a ball is let go at the top of the one ramp over here, what will happen? All right, so it's moving down the ramp to the bottom and back up. If a ball rolls down one ramp, it keeps rolling up the other side until it reaches the same initial height. Now, repeat that experiment, but make the second ramp less steep. What will happen? So it's going down the ramp to the bottom and then back up. It will still keep rolling until it reaches the same initial height, but this time it does have to roll farther. Finally, make the ramp flat. Now what will happen? All right, once again, it's going down the ramp and then it just keeps going. It will keep going forever. No external force is necessary. It's not that Aristotle was wrong. In everyday life, objects do need to keep being pushed in order to keep moving. Push a book across a table. When you stop pushing, it stops moving. Aristotle is right in terms of what we see around us every day. It's just that Galileo and later Newton imagined a world where friction could be eliminated. Friction represents an external force acting on the object, just as your push is an external force. In the absence of all external forces, an object's velocity remains constant. Two equal and opposite forces have the same effect. They cancel to create zero net force. Sir Isaac Newton was a brilliant mathematician and physicist, among many other professions. Perhaps he is most famous for his three laws describing motion and his law of gravitation. Newton's first law of motion. An object at rest remains at rest, and an object in motion remains in motion, unless acted on by a net external force. In other words, an object maintains its velocity, both speed and direction, unless acted upon by a non-zero net force. Having zero velocity, being at rest is not special, it's just one possible velocity, a velocity which is no more special than any other. This law is often referred to as the law of inertia. The word inertia comes from the Latin word inners, which means idle or lazy. Inertia is the tendency of an object to resist any change in motion. Objects with more inertia are harder to stop and harder to get moving if they are at rest. Mass is the measure of an object's inertia. Sometimes it's called inertial mass. It is a measure of how much stuff is in something. So here we have two cubes made of the same material. This one's just larger than this one. Therefore, this one has more mass and more inertia. Mass has been defined in two separate ways, inertial mass and gravitational mass. Fortunately, all experiments show that both masses are equal to each other. The measurement of an object's resistance to changes in motion due to an external force is inertial mass, whereas gravitational mass relates the strength of the gravitational attraction between the Earth or other large body to an object. Newton's laws are only valid in inertial reference frames. An inertial reference frame is a reference frame where Newton's law of inertia holds true. It is a reference frame which is not accelerating or rotating. Being at rest on Earth's surface is considered an inertial reference frame since Newton's first law is valid. Every body in an inertial reference frame remains in a state of rest or constant velocity unless acted on by an external unbalanced force. When your car accelerates, it's not an inertial reference frame. This is why a drink on the console of a car can suddenly seem to accelerate backwards without any force acting on it. Until the car starts accelerating, the drink is at rest. The reference frame, the car, then accelerates underneath the drink. 
the drink falls backwards inside the car without any net external force. If you are sitting at your desk in a classroom, you are in an inertial reference frame. If you're wondering why being stationary on Earth's surface is considered an inertial reference frame, even though the Earth is spinning while orbiting around the Sun, that's a good question. While it is true that Earth is moving through space, the acceleration that we and all objects are undergoing isn't substantial enough to violate Newton's law of inertia. The pencil on your desk isn't going to fly away from you because the Earth is spinning. Therefore, it is an inertial reference frame.